All right, now we're going to be talking about one of the most important ideas in Algebra 1 as it relates to linear functions. We'll be talking about rate of change and slope, which is really just the steepness of a line. Slope could be zero for a flat line, could be um, positive for a line that's increasing, or it could be negative for a line that's sloping downhill. Um, we'll look at lots of, lots of examples here, but let's look at a definition first. And our, the, the key definition for the rate of change of a line is the change in the dependent variable divided by the change in the independent variable. So that's the change in y divided by the change in x. And so if you have a couple points, you're going to subtract the y values, and then you'll divide that by the difference of the x values. What's really important is that your denominator is not zero. You can't divide by zero. And so that means x2 can't be equal to x1. The two x values can't be the same, um, because if they were, you would end up dividing by zero. So really simply, it's just the change in y divided by the change in x. And even simpler, we refer to slope as just rise over run. Um, very, uh, very couple of very quick examples. I will show in the red line, this is a quick example of a positive slope. And also with this next red line, it's still a positive slope, but it's, it's a much, has a much lower value. In my purple line here, we have a negative slope. In this green line, we have a slope of zero because it is just a flat line. Okay, so that would have a slope of zero. And lastly, with, this, with the blue line, if the line is vertical, we in that case, the um, slope is undefined. Some people think of it as having an infinite slope, but it's better to say that the slope is undefined. So it doesn't have a defined slope. It's a vertical line. So we can uh, determine slope from a table, and we'll do that right here. And it looks like these couple tables I'm giving you have some gaps in them, and let's try to fill them in. And we're assuming we're working with lines here. So we're assuming the differences are constant. Okay, so this looks like it's down by six, another down by six. So we're gonna try to fill in the pattern assuming we keep going down by six. So this would be a negative 13 and this would be an 11. And these values would apply over here as well. We could fill in an 11 and a negative 13. All right, I'm going to go ahead and erase these differences just to give us a little bit of space. And when you're finding the slope from a set of points in a table, or maybe you're just given some points from a graph or some ordered pairs, if it's a line, it doesn't matter which two points you choose. The slopes, will you'll get the same result for the slope no matter what two points you choose. So I'll choose a couple, just a couple random points here. And let's go to our formula. Okay, so slope is going to be y1 minus y2. And really be careful when we're subtracting negatives here. That's a common, common um, way to make a mistake. Divided by x1 minus x2. Okay, and this turns into a 24 over negative 4. So we get a slope of negative six. And often the slope is referred to as m. And so our m value here, or our slope is negative six. And you saw that earlier. We saw that it was just going down by six each time. Okay, and so that kind of connects, it kind of makes sense. We have a slope of negative six. So let's, over, let's look over at this right-hand table and you'll see something different. You'll see, I think, that all the x values are different. Um, and all the x values are not separate, they're not going up by ones anymore, okay? In my first example, they were going up by ones, but here they're not. So we can't just say, hey, this is dropping by six each time, the slope must still be negative six. We can't say that because these x values are not changing by one each time. So let's go ahead and put in, whoops, put in some some different points into our equation and let's see what we get. And I'll choose just another couple random points. How about those two guys? And so our slope is going to be five minus a negative 19. We subtract the y values over a subtraction of the x values, 
okay? So five minus a negative 19 is 24, so we get the same value up top. Six minus a 22 is going to be a negative 16, okay? So we get a different value down below, okay? And that's just because of the different pattern in the x values, okay? And that, that turns into a slope of negative 1.5. Okay, once we do that division. Critical question, an important question that people often have is, what if you divide in the opposite way? Negative 19 minus five divided by 22 minus six. And you get the same answer, okay? Here we'll get a negative 24 divided by a positive 16, which is still going to be a negative 1.5 slope. Okay, so it doesn't matter which direction you divide, as long as you're consistent, as long as these two variable, these two numbers correspond to the same ordered pair, and then these two numbers correspond to the same ordered pair. Okay. Let's look at an example at finding slope from a graph. And the key here is you want to just find some points on the graph that are easy and clean to read. So it looks like that's a nice clean point and it looks like that's a nice clean point as well. So that point is two comma five, and this point over here is zero comma one. One thing I like to do with slope is just make a slope triangle, okay? And that gives us the rise, and it gives us the run, okay? So if we make a little right triangle in there. So let's fill in some values, okay, into our slope triangle. So this has a difference of four, and this has a difference of two, okay? So our slope here is gonna be four over two, which is just two. Uh, separately for this graph over here, let's find a couple clean points. It looks like we have that point right there. We have this point right here. We can make another slope triangle. And it looks like we're dropping six as we're moving over four, okay? So our slope here is going to be negative six over four, which is negative 1.5. Slope, by the way, is often, I think, more easily expressed as a fraction. So uh, it might be easier to think of this as a reduced fraction of negative three halves as well. And really what that means is we go down three, one, two, three, for every two we go over, okay? So minus three over two. Okay, so I think fraction is often a little bit easier for slope. And then slope from coordinates, we can, again, just plug in our formula, change in y over change in x. So that's eight over negative 10, which is negative four over five, okay, as a, as a fraction. And let's look at a couple couple sort of interesting examples of slope of horizontal and vertical lines. So a horizontal line has a slope of zero and a vertical line has a slope that's undefined, as I said earlier. Okay, so same deal, we just plug in our formula, change in y's, five minus five, over the change in x's, negative three minus six. Looks like we have a zero over negative nine, so we have a slope of zero. And that's a horizontal line, and that makes sense. I think it should make sense to you because we have the same y coordinates. No matter how far over left or right we go in the x direction, we always go up five. Okay, so it's going to be a horizontal line right at the y equals five level. Let's contrast that with what's going to be a vertical line. So here we have the same x coordinates, okay? So no matter how far up or down we go, x is always four. And we should get an undefined slope. Let's check it out and see. So change in y's over the change in x's. So we have a negative five over zero, which, is, which violates math law. We can't divide by zero, right? So this is going to be an undefined slope. Okay, and that's because it's a vertical line. The x coordinates are always four, no matter how far up or down we go in the y direction, x will always be four, so we have an undefined slope. And we'll do a challenge in our next video, so that's a good place to leave it right here.